Hello and welcome back Side High Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you to take some old PC cooling fans and turn it into a very useful room cooling fan with using a few simple parts such as a speed motor controlling circuit with using a TIP122 Darlington transistor. Let's get started. And these are the items you're going to need to make for this project. The items you're going to need, some pieces of wood, which will be the support frame of this device, some old PC cooling fans, a 12 volt power supply, which will power the entire circuit, a 12 volt DC female connector jack, a 9 volt battery clip, a slide switch, and a speed motor controlling circuit which I made in a previous video and I'm just simply recycling the circuit. And as you can see, it uses a TIP122 Darlington transistor, a 1 in 4007 diode, a 10k ohm potentiometer, and a puck converter. What I'm going to do is cut off the old little PC cooling fan and connect it to the two larger ones. And if you want to see details of how I made this circuit, simply click on the annotation card above or watch a sped up version of this video in this video. And what I want to do is modify this circuit by adding this 12 volt female DC jack to the output of the buck converter and then connect the 12 volt power supply to it, which will also power the fans. And you're also going to need some needed mini magnets. Now let's go ahead and assemble this project and let's get started. And this clip right here is a sped up version of how I made this circuit. And there, the circuit is now complete. Now what I need to do is take this 9 volt battery clip, and this part right here is the negative, and this part here is the positive. And what I want to do is turn the 9 volt batteries into a series circuit. And what I want to do is connect this positive, which goes over to the 9 volt battery clip, connects to the negative, and from the negative, goes over and connects to the positive. And from the positive, we'll connect to the negative. And then the negative connects to the negative. Solder the wires into place. Solder the negative wire over to the positive. And now, solder the negative wire into place. And there, the circuit is now complete. Now let's go ahead and make a quick test. Take the two 9 volt batteries, plug them in. And there, as you can see, it works. Except this 9 volt battery connector is not very good. It's a little finicky, but you can see it works. And now turn the knob and you can control the speed of the fan. Goes on low and then up to high. And now it's time to modify this circuit. What I wanna do is cut this negative wire that is connected to the output of the buck converter and it connects with the potentiometer. Cut the wire. Remove the insulation, and now solder tin it. And I'll solder these wires over to the slide switch. And there we go, the slide switch is now connected. And I'll just go ahead and make a quick test to make sure it works properly. And there, it turns on. And it turns off. Next, take some hot glue and glue down the slide switch. And there we go, glued into place. And now hold it into position and wait for the glue to solidify. And there, she'll look just like this. Turn it on, and it doesn't move. Perfect. And now it's time to take the 12 volt DC female jack and put it into the output of the buck converter. So then this way, the circuit will work off on batteries and work off from a power supply. Remove the insulation. Solder tin it. And 
And now, solder to the output of the puck converter. Connect the positive to positive and the negative to negative. And there we go, soldered into place. And now what I want to do is add some more solder to make sure it stays in place better. And there we go, soldered into place. And there, finally, the circuit is now complete. Let's go ahead and connect the 12 volt power supply to make sure it works. Turn it on. Plug it in and then turn it on. And there, as you can see, it works. Now if I go over and remove the batteries, you can see that the circuit still stays on. Which this means the circuit stays stationary. And if I want to make it portable, all I have to do is just simply unplug the power supply and connect the batteries, which will then make it portable. Plug the batteries back into place, turn on the circuit, and you can see it turns on. And now unplug the power supply, and the circuit stays on. Well, it turned off because that 9 volt battery connector is a little finicky. However, you can see it still works. And there you have it, the electronics of the circuit is almost complete. Now, since I know this part of the circuit works, I'm going to remove the tiny PC cooling fan and replace it with the two larger ones. Before I do that, I want to take some hot glue and place it on top of the butt converter. This part isn't really necessary, but it's good to do to keep everything insulated. And there we go, it should look just like this. And now it's time to cut this old PC cooling fan, since it's no longer needed. Next, I'm going to take some super glue and glue these two large PC cooling fans together. Add super glue on one side, spray some activator, push them together, spray some more activator, add some more glue to make it more secure. And there, it is now glued together. It's nice and strong now. Next, I'm going to take the wire from one PC cooling fan and bring it over and tuck it underneath a little groove and connect it to the other PC cooling fan. Place it in going like this. Doesn't fit very well because I need to remove this white wire since it's not necessary. Cut it and save that wire for something else. And now take these two wires and tuck it inside the groove. And there, it goes in much better. Next, I'm going to take some super glue and glue down the wire so it stays in place. Spray some activator. And there, it is now glued into place. Next, what I'm going to do is cut the wire, separate them, remove the insulation, and solder to them. And now, solder the wires to the other PC cooling fan. Solder the negative to negative and the positive to positive. And there we go, soldered into place, and it should look just like this. And now remove the white wire since it's not needed. Desolder it, and now pull it out and save the wire for our future project. And now I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick test to make sure that the two fans turn on. And there, the fans turn on. Excellent. Next, I'm gonna take the speed controller circuit and place it on top of the PC cooling fan. Place it on top. I like the position, so now I'm gonna glue it into place. Take some hot glue and glue it into place. And there we go, add some more hot glue to make sure it stays in place better. And there, it works. And now I'm going to go and take the positive and negative wire from the PC cooling fans and connect it to the circuit. Cut a little notch on the side of the PC cooling fan so that way I can tuck the wires inside. And now cut the wire to the right length. And then same thing as always, 
Remove the insulation, solder tin it. And I'll take some shrink tube and place it over it. Take some little ones that go over the wires on this side. And then take a larger shrink tube and put it on the other wires on the opposite side. And now go ahead and solder the positive to positive. And then negative to negative. And I'll take the shrink tubes and cover up the exposed wires. Shrink the tubes. And now take the larger shrink tube and cover them. And now shrink the tube. And there we go, the wires are now connected. Next, I'm gonna take some hot glue and glue down the wire so it stays in place. Next, I'm gonna take some neodymium magnets and place it onto the nine volt batteries. Take a couple of magnets and put them on the side, since the magnets are attracted to the 9 volt battery. And now take some hot glue and put a small dab of hot glue on top of each magnet. And now glue the magnets into place. Put them in and slide it over so they, that way they can stick. Connect the 9 volt battery connector. So that way you get the 9 volt batteries connected properly. Wait for the glue to solidify. And as you can see, the magnet stayed in place, except for that one magnet, which I'll have to fix. And there we go, the two 9 volt batteries are now connected and now sticking to the magnet so they can stay in place to make this device portable. Now I'm gonna take these pieces of wood and put them into the sides. Doing this will allow it to stand up. And I want to take these two pieces of wood and connect them together like this to make the feet of the stand of this device. And I'm going to connect it with these screws. Put the wood inside right here. Take a marker and mark it. And now take a drill and drill a pilot hole. And there, I have a pilot hole. Place it in and take the screw and screw it into place. And there we go, screwed into place. And I'll repeat the same process on the opposite side. Next, take this smaller piece of wood, which will be the feet, and drill another pilot hole. Take the screw, screw it in partly. and then drill a pilot hole into the leg. Take this piece of wood, which will be the foot of this leg, screw it into place, and there, it should connect just like that. And there, repeat the same process on the opposite side. And there, it should look just like this. Although there's one issue, I had to change the screws because the screws I was using wasn't very good these ones are better for this type of material. Unfortunately, it's too long because I wanted the shorter ones so it doesn't stick out like this. But that's okay. What I'm gonna do is simply cut the screws off and then take these pliers and cut off the tips. And there, the project is now complete. Let's go ahead and test it out. As you can see, the two 9 volt batteries are connected. Turn on the switch and you can see the fans turn on not turning on very easily. That's because the batteries are low. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take the 12 volt power supply, plug it in, plug it into the fan, and I'll plug it into the wall, 
And there, as you can see, it works. Not working very well like I thought. Oh wait, that's because the knob isn't turned all the way. It's actually turned down low, so now I have to turn it up on maximum. Now let's go ahead and test it out properly. And you can see you can turn it down to a gentle breeze, or turn it up to a high speed breeze. And there, as you can see, it works. And there you have it, and as you can see, it works. And it's on maximum, I turn the knob all the way to maximum, and as you can hear, it's very silent. Let's get a closer look. Getting closer. The only thing you can hear is the air blowing onto the microphone. Scan to the side where there's no air blowing. The only thing you can hear is the cars on the outside and me talking. And the birds, but you don't hear the fan. The fan is actually very silent. Puts off a very comfortable amount of breeze coming from the top all the way from the bottom sides of course and it's actually very pleasant so this will make an excellent fan to use to keep yourself cool during summer and there you have it now you know how to turn an old pc cooling fan into a room cooling fan with an adjustable speed motor circuit with using a tip 122 darlington transistor thank you for watching sci tech i hope you learned something new and don't forget to like share and subscribe and of course click on the bell icon to be notified of future sci tech videos till the next tech goodbye